Look at that hair. That is atrocious. That scares me. Sure. How could you let me get on camera looking like this? You're the one who made it that way, not me. This is ridiculous. Hi, guys. Sherm did my hair today. So, we have Sherm to thank for my beauty today. Blame me! Mm. <laughs> oh, I just put it up. I couldn't find my hair tie that I, that'll hold all my hair. And these other hair ties, when I try to put all my hair up in them, they snap. So I got to put them up individual and put use two. So I got like, I just like, it, I can't stand to wear my hair down much. It like bugs me, you know. So I always got to put it up. Sometimes I just wear it down for the videos. Just for a different look. But I guess I got a different look going on today, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we got that accomplished. <laughs> <sighs> so, oh, today, um, this week we are reading um, our Bible reading in the Contemporary English Version, the CEV. Now, like I said before, I prefer the King, the King James Version, the New King James Version, you know, this King James Version. But um, the way they have it set up one here, they do it a diff every week. They do it with a different um, thing, like this week's contemporary English. Last week was um, what was it? Um, I don't know. I don't remember what it was. But it was um, like the next week might be. Um, I don't. I don't want that version. Well, I don't. I prefer the King James version too, but I don't, that's. I don't, like, I don't like that version. I don't know what it was. Oh, I don't know what it was. The, I mean, it's just the way they've got it set up here on this website where you have to read a different um, one each each week. I guess that's good in case any of you guys, you know, don't read the King James Version. Then um, hopefully, you know, and they all basically say about the same thing. It's just they're just worded a little differently. But I myself prefer the King James but, like I said, this week is the contemporary English version. I think last week might have been the Holman Christian Standard version. But let's begin today with um, our Bible reading. We're going to begin with Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through verse 13. An example from marriage. My friends... You surely understand enough about law to know that laws only have power over people who are alive. For example, the law says that a man's wife must remain his wife as long as he lives. But once her husband is dead, she is free to marry someone else. However, if she goes off with another man while her husband is still alive, she is said to be unfaithful. That is how it is with you, my friends. You are now part of the body of Christ and are dead to the power of the law. You are free to belong to Christ, who was raised to life so that we could serve God. When we thought only of ourselves, the law made us have sinful desires. It made every part of our bodies into slaves whom are doomed to die. But the law no longer rules over us. We are like dead people, and it cannot have any power over us. Now we can serve God in a new way by obeying his spirit, and not in the old way by obeying the written law. Now, the battle with sin. Does this mean that the law is sinful? Certainly not. But if it had not been for the law... I would have not known what sin is really like. For example, I would not have known what it means to want something that belongs to someone else unless the law had told me not to do that. 
It was sin that used this command as a way of making me have all kinds of desires, but without the law, sin is dead. Before I knew about the law, I was alive, but as soon as I heard that command, sin came to life, and I died. The very command that was supposed to bring life to me instead brought death. Sin used this command to trick me, and because of it, I died. Still the law and its commands are holy and correct and good. Am I saying that something good is caused by my death? Certainly not. It was sin that killed me by using something good. Now we can see how terrible and evil sin really is. And that, my friends, is Romans 7, 1 through 13. hope I don't got lipstick on my teeth for you guys. <laughs> now we're going to read Psalm 17, a prayer by David, the prayer of an innocent person. I am innocent, Lord. Won't you listen as I pray and I beg for help? I am honest. Please hear my prayer. Only you can say that I'm innocent because only your eyes can see the truth. You know my heart, and even during the night you have tested me and found me innocent. I have made up my mind never to tell a lie. I don't do like others. I obey your teachings and am not cruel. I have followed you without ever stumbling. I pray to you, God, because you will help me. Listen and answer my prayer. Show your wonderful love. Your mighty arm protects those who run to you for safety from their enemies. Protect me as you would your, your very own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Don't let my brutal enemies attack from all sides and kill me. They refuse to show mercy and they keep bragging. They have caught up with me. My enemies are everywhere, eagerly hoping to smear me in the dirt. They are like hungry lions hunting for food, or like young lions hiding in ambush. Do something, Lord. Attack and defeat them. Take your sword and save me from these evil people. Use your powerful arm and rescue me from the hands of mere humans whose world won't last. You provide food for those you love. Their children have plenty, and their grandchildren will have more than enough. I am innocent, Lord, and I will see your face. When I wake, all I want is to see you as you are. And that was Psalm 17, a prayer by David, the prayer of an innocent person. I love David's psalms. Do I say this every day? Yes. <laughs> you guys are here she goes again. <laughs> we know you love psalms. <laughs> All right, guys. Lastly for today is Proverbs 19, 22, and 23. What matters most is loyalty. It's better to be poor than to be a liar. I totally agree. Showing respect to the Lord brings true life. If you do it, you can relax without fear of danger. Amen to that as well. And that was Proverbs 19, 22, and 23, guys. That, okay, everyone, that was today's Bible reading. I hope it touched your guys' hearts. I hope you guys are having a great um, start to your week, Monday. It's nice and hot out there. I've heard that. I haven't been out, but I heard it's in the 90s out there. So trying, my mom was wanting to mow. I'm trying to talk her out of mowing today. So I thought she said her feet was hurting. So I think she's not going to mow today now. It's too hot for her to be out there. So... 
I think she's staying in, so that's good. So if you guys are out there, please be careful in the heat and don't do too much because um, you don't want to get overheated and have a heat stroke or anything, you know. I know it's evening, but it's still, last I heard it was still in the 90s just a few minutes ago. So just be safe, you guys. You know I love you guys, and I just want what's best for you guys. But your Heavenly Father and your brother Jesus want what's best for you and love you even more than I do, even so much more, more than anybody ever possibly could. Can you imagine someone loves you that much? Doesn't that just fill you with so much love and happiness that someone loves you that much? Like you're the only person in the world. It's like... It's just so amazing. So blessed that they choose to love us. They don't have to. They didn't have to love us and save us and take us to heaven with them. They could just forget about us and blow up the whole world and all of us in it. We're just mere sinners. But they love us that much. I just can't get over it. And this amazes me. Let's bring those souls to Jesus, guys, and God willing, I'll see you guys tomorrow with another Bible reading. Bye, guys. God bless.